Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode, episode 2 of Pickle Juice, the show where you get to taste my juice drippings. I'm laying in bed right now, just, you know, pondering, pondering life, pondering my existence, wondering what is this all about, but, but, I can't think about that, because I just watched Moon Knight episode 2. Just watched it about two hours ago, so on this episode, I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to give you my thoughts, my quick thoughts on Moon Knight Episode 1. I'm going to break down what I thought about Episode 2 because I haven't made videos about this before. If you want to know what I think about Moon Knight, stick around. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the Unreal Engine 5 that they just released uh, footage of and why I think that we're kind of getting to the pinnacle of video game graphics and I don't think it's going to get much better and... Maybe a little, a little rant, not a rant, but my opinion on certain, you'll see, you'll see. If you like video games, stick around. And holy shit, I know that I'm like four years late, but I just watched the first season of Succession. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit because I absolutely loved it. Oh my god, I have to talk about it. So if you're into Succession you're into video games, you want to hear what I think about Moon Knight, sit down, sit the fuck down, and listen to me. Listen to what I have to say, you little dirty graboid. Just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, if you're into this, if you want to just listen to my calm, smooth, sexy voice while you fall asleep or while you're at work or just for entertainment, stick around. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about episode two of Moon Knight. Well, Episode 1 first. <clears throat> so, I really like Moon Knight. I'm not sure if I love it yet. I'm not going to quite go to, I love it, but I really like it. The first episode was really engaging. The mystery of what's going on with Steven, his character, the directing of it, the way that it was handled, the characterization of it, the introduction of the villain. I thought it was really well done. I spoke about it on Halogen Helix's channel, so I'm not going to get too in-depth about it. That's in the past. That, that's old news. We're talking about the now. We're on to Moon Knight Episode 2. But Episode 1, I enjoyed it. Just know that. I think I gave it a 7.5 or 8 out of 10. I loved a lot of elements of it. Didn't love the cupcake chase scene with the terrible CGI. That was a little too MCU popcorn gumball bullshitty for me. But, but, the episode's really good. Oscar Isaac killed it in the first episode. That scene where he's eating the steak and he's, there's just like that 45 seconds of him crying because he doesn't even know what's going on in his mind. He can't even live a normal life. That, that was such great acting. He was so good in this role. So, I really liked it, didn't love it. Episode 2... I think I loved it. I'm not sure. I'm on the verge of loving it. I really, 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 really liked it. Sorry. Um, I apologize for that. I really, really, really liked it. We're two episodes in, and I think this show is really doing a good job at revealing details at a good pace. We're not learning too much too soon or not enough fast enough. We're getting just enough mystery about Mark Spector and just enough details about the whole Khonshu and the Egyptian God stuff and Arthur Haro and what's really going on. We just meet his wife in this episode. Oh yeah, spoilers. But man, I gotta say, I gotta put it out there, and I know it's early, it's only two episodes in, and there are four more episodes where they could fuck it up, or they could nail it, I don't know yet, this is premature, I am saying it, admitting it, this is a premature statement, but I'm putting it out there, I think that Oscar Isaac, as Mark Spector and Stephen Grant, is the best casting we've got in the MCU since RDJ as Iron Man, I'm not kidding, I love Cap, I like Thor, Black Widow, Mark Ruffalo's good, Thanos, all these characters, I really like them, and they're compelling, and they're fun. This character is on another level. I I'm not kidding. He's he's not just a regular dude that's kind of down on his luck and kind of uh, gets into an accident or he misses his daughter like Ant-Man. He's not just some regular dude who doesn't really have any deep complexities. No, this guy, 
he feels like a fully fleshed out character. We've never seen a character in the MCU like this before. Maybe compared to other films and other TV shows, he's not the deepest or the best. Compared to shows like what I'm going to talk about, Succession, this show isn't like on that level, it's not Breaking Bad, but the characterization for a superhero movie, I've never seen a character like this who has the DID, who has the multiple personalities that are fighting each other. He's, it's, it's nice to see a character who has this mental illness and that a lot of people, millions of people can relate to. Not, not that I have DID or that a lot of people have it. I can't even begin to claim that I understand what they go through or that I have it or anything. No, 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 no. But I do have certain mental issues and I know other people do as well. And the, the way that he acts and the, the struggles that he goes through, it's I really feel it. I understand it. And it's really refreshing to see in the MCU when we get, I mean, Hawkeye's just a straight-laced family man. Steve Rogers is just a straight-laced dude. Ant-Man is just a straight-laced funny guy who wants to get back to his daughter. Thor's kind of different. Iron Man's different. Black Panther is just a straight-laced family dude. A lot of just good guys that you just like because they're, they have charisma, they have charm, they're just good guys you want to root for. Steven Grant isn't that. He's this really reserved, dweeby, normal guy that you would see working at a bookstore that people would pick on and make fun of. And he has this real likability about him. He's adorable. I don't really say that about grown men very often. This man is adorable. I just want to pet his head. I want to give him a hug. I want to smell him. I just want to, I want to hang out with this guy and let him know that it's okay. I am really into this character. I think it's so compelling seeing him waking up in different places and blacking out and not understanding what happened. The fact that he can't even live a normal life. He doesn't know what's going on. His wife shows up and says, what's up, Mark? Where have you been? I'm your wife. And he's like, who are you? I I'm married to you. I didn't know I was married to you. He doesn't even know that he has this life. And it also makes me kind of confused because, okay, here we go. You have Stephen Grant, you have Mark Spector. Mark Spector, it turns out, is this mercenary that got the power of this great Egyptian god, Khonshu. He's his avatar. He's the Moon Knight. He goes on these grand adventures in Egypt, and he has this wife and this grand life. Hey, that rhymed. And you have Stephen, who lives his life as kind of a bookworm and a nerd and a kind of quiet, reserved guy who lives in his flat in London. So which one of them is the real person? Because one of them had to have been born and lived their whole life up until this point to where they're in their 40s. Like Steven remembers his whole life. Mark remembers his whole life. I'm not really sure how this is working of when did the double personality develop? Who's the real one? Who is the real one who was born as Mark or Steven and lived a full life and then the other one came in? I hope they explain it because it's still kind of confusing to me. When did it happen? Why did it happen? How long has it been happening? I don't know. I don't know. Am I making sense here? If not, you know, whatever. Fuck it. But I'm just kind of confused on the whole mental thing of who's in control and when and why. And hopefully they'll explain it. But even if they don't, I'm still kind of intrigued because it's cool and it's different. Guys, even if you don't love the show, something that we've been complaining about for years about the MCU is that it's cookie cutter. It's the same, same thing, same characters, same final act, the same stupid CGI fight in the end. Every character is the same. Doctor Strange is like Iron Man, Cap, and blah, 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 blah. This is completely different. We've gotten the tech. We've gotten the monsters. We've gotten the magic. We, we've gotten the space adventure. And now we're getting this whole other Egyptian god side to the MCU where there's the, these gods who are bringers of justice and they have avatars and they take over people and they kind of alluded towards gods in Thor but they they say well we're not really gods it's just really all science and then in Black Panther there's that one god but we don't really see it we're seeing these gods this is in the MCU now like it's kind of interesting and it's different and it's cool this this crazy Egyptian magic that we're seeing and now it's revealed that the alligator god is kind of like Minority Report. And Ethan Hawke is this cult leader who thinks that he has this great purpose in life to judge people and bring justice to people. And he, 
you almost kind of sympathize with them. Not sympathize, but empathize. You understand where he's coming from. His God judges people before they do evil. Moon Knight's God judges people after they've done the evil. And Arthur sits uh, Stephen down in a scene, the best scene in the episode, and they have this really great conversation about their, their, their moral ideas about when people should be judged and how you should do it. And Stephen's like, well, will you kill a baby if they're going to do something terrible in 30 years? And Arthur's like, fuck yeah. And Stephen's like, well, that's where I crossed the line, killing babies. That's not cool. And then Arthur's like, well, well hold on, hold on, son. I used to be the Moon Knight. I used to be his avatar. I know everything he's saying to you. The way that he was picking apart what Conchu was saying in Steven's head while he was saying it was awesome. He understands this God. And now he switched gods and he thinks that this God's doing the righteous thing. And it really makes you think for a second, oh shit, which one is in the right? Because the Conchu one, now it turns out, is also kind of a manipulative bastard because he's holding Mark Spector hostage. Because he tells him, if you stop being Moon Knight, if you break our agreement, I'm going to make your wife Moon Knight. I'm holding you hostage, bitch. And he doesn't want that. So he knows that he has to do his bidding or else his wife will be in danger. He has his balls in a vice. And it's interesting that this God isn't just this righteous, good guy who does the right thing. He's kind of manipulative. He's kind of a dick. It's really cool. I'm not into history or anything, but I'm digging it. And Oscar Isaac, man, whoo, Ethan Hawke is good in this episode. He's, he's better than he was in the first episode. Him putting the glass in his shoes to kind of teach the discipline, him judging people with his cane and the things on his uh, arm is cool. But like, I was like, okay, let, let's see a little more. Let's see a little more. And now that you come to this crazy commune and he's this sort of pseudo cult leader who's leading these people into this false paradise but is it false but you see it in his eyes that he really believes in what he's doing and it's, it's very interesting it's very interesting i hope they don't drop the ball with this character but oscar isaac man he's killing it absolutely not just like that's a good performance in a superhero movie in a superhero show no this is a great performance just in tv in anything just a great performance the mannerisms he brings, the way he talks, the way he moves, the way he switches from Mark to Steven. It's so fucking interesting to see them have a conversation in the mirror. Let me take control. No, it's my turn to take control. You don't even know how to take control. How long will I be in here? Dude, give me control. They're having this fight over the body and you really feel for him. And I'm interested to see more about Mark because we've gotten two episodes with Steven. Now give me some Mark. Let me let me see his background. Let me see a flashback with him. Let me understand who he is because he seems like he's not just a goody two-shoes. He has blood on his hands. He's killed people. He's a mercenary. He's done some bad shit. He's hiding guns and stolen money in a storage locker somewhere. So we'll see what's up about that. Um, I think when he becomes Mr. Knight, it was a little weird because he comes down. He changes into Mr. Knight, and it was funny, and they gave a reason to why he did it. See, I didn't read the Moon Knight comics. I'm not a Moon Knight guy. I have maybe one Moon Knight comic I know of him, but I don't really know who he is, why he does what he does, why Mr. Knight is Mr. Knight, why he dresses the way he does, who his villains are. I don't know a ton about him. So I'm kind of just going with the flow with this one, and I'm really enjoying it. He comes down, and they say, you gotta summon a suit. Summon a suit. And Steven summons a dapper white business suit. And Mark's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, you look like a demented Colonel Sanders. That part was good. That part was funny. And Steven's like, ooh, I, 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 I do look good. Oh, bollocks. I look really good. I look dapper. And then he starts fighting another uh, Egyptian jackal. And this is where the episode kind of got a little wacky. Because they made the jackal invisible to the human eye. And you see him just fighting nothing on the street. And people are like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Is he drunk? And it, it looked kind of silly seeing him and his wife fighting this invisible nothing. It looked very cheesy. And you could tell that they did it purely because they didn't want to spend the money on the CGI. Because the CGI on the jackal isn't good already. So they were like, fuck, let's, let's hide it as much as we can. Oh shit, let's make it invisible. Fuck, let's do it. And that scene was kind of wacky. But I like the moment when Steven finally, he nuts up and he says, 
you know what, fuck it, I'm not giving you the body. I'm gonna fight him, and he fucking punches the jackal. And you really feel like Steven is growing a little bit. He's kind of growing into the shoes of Moon Knight, and he's kind of understanding the assignment. But then he gets his ass whooped, and Mark is like, give me the body back. He morphs into Moon Knight, and there's a really cool rooftop chase where he's jumping across rooftops. He jumps across the moon. We've seen it in the trailer. He fucking grabs the jackal, stabs him on top of this uh, pillar thing. He grabs his crescent moon. It's a really cool, you know, 45 seconds. But I will say, two episodes in, we've gotten maybe a minute and a half of Moon Knight in the suit. So maybe I'd like a little bit more of him. I think they're they're. I'm not sure if they're hiding it for story purposes or just because they don't want to spend the money on fight scenes. But so far, I, I don't mind how little Moon Knight there is as long as there's more Moon Knight later. But the fact that you don't see him for 25, 30 minutes and then you see him, it does make it more satisfying when you get to see him. I do wish that we would see a little more of him. And then his wife was, um, she was okay. I, I liked that she was responding naturally to the situation of if, if you wake up one day and your spouse is just not acting like who they are and they're like, hey, my name's actually Bob Griffin. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Stop with the accent. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like she acted in a real realistic way. Like, Mark, what are you doing? Your name's Mark Spector. We have a life together. Why are you in this flat? Why are you having a British accent? I like that about her, but I had a hunch that she was British and she's doing an American accent because sometimes her acting was kind of eh, and her accent started to kind of slip from American into British on, on some, some sentences. She wasn't the best actress, but she wasn't bad. She was good. She was solid. And it didn't feel like forced diversity. It wasn't woke. It wasn't like she came in and took over the show and she's the Moon Knight and she can take care of herself. Girls, get it done. No, she fought a couple guys. She was competent. She held her own, but it wasn't like woman power. It wasn't anything like that. I think she was a good, interesting love interest without being the generic girlfriend that just gets saved. And I gotta say, I'm actually genuinely very excited to see next week's episode. I, I wish all of the episodes were out right now because I would watch them all in a row because I'm all in. I think that this might be the strongest opening two episodes of any of the MCU shows so far. And Stephen Grant slash Mark Spector, I'm just going to call him Stephen because that's who he is for 85% of the show. He is hands da -da 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 down, hands by my waist. My favorite new character they've introduced in the past five, six, seven years. And if they nail the next four episodes and they keep on this trajectory, he could be one of my favorite MCU characters, period. I already said I think it's the best performance since RDJ. So if they keep giving it to me, if they keep delivering, this could be one of my favorites in the MCU. Oscar Isaac is fucking murdering it. He's slaying it, slaying it. And I'm pumped to see what happens next. Come on, don't let me down, please. Please, God. Falcon the Winter Soldier, Loki, WandaVision. <sighs> what was the other one? Um, oh, fuck, Hawkeye. Oh, God. Every single episode so far, the final episode lets me down. The WandaVision final episode was booty. Hawkeye ruined Kingpin. Falcon Winter Soldier fucking rushed terrible fucking writing. Loki, it was a boring exposition dump. Every single one of these shows so far has started off well, then they kind of taper out in the middle, and then the ending is just a big fat fucking dud. I haven't had one of these shows where I come out of the ending and say, yes, they nailed it, awesome fucking ending, I'm so pumped. All of them, they end and I'm like, shit. Well, at least it started well. So hopefully this one doesn't disappoint. And I don't want to group it together with the other ones just because it's Disney. Because each show has different showrunners, different writers, different actors, different directors, different editors, different everything. The shows are completely fundamentally different from one another. But can you blame me for thinking, oh shit, they've already done it four times. Maybe the ending won't be great. Please, I got my fingers crossed if you stick it. Is it can you blame me if I think that? No. You can't, and if you do blame me, fuck you, I blame you. Just kidding, love you, 
Okay, so Moon Knight, I like it. I'm digging it. I, I'm borderline loving it. I'm going to wait a few episodes before I 100% say I love it because I was loving Hawkeye for three episodes. I'm loving a lot of elements of it, but I don't quite love it yet. We'll see where it goes, and I'm enjoying myself. It's nice to enjoy an MCU property because I haven't loved a lot of them lately. Now, let's talk about Unreal Engine 5 and why I think it's kind of a crock of shit. Well, I don't want to say crock of shit. I'm not going to say it's a complete lie. But every generation, these companies keep pushing these new improvements and enhancements in technology. New, exciting lighting and textures. And you've never seen this before. This is the uncanny valley. We're getting close to the uncanny valley. You can't tell the difference between a video game and real life. It's that realistic. Bull fucking shit. People have been saying this for years, for multiple generations, the past decade. We're getting to the point where it's the uncanny valley. God damn it, it's uncanny. You can't tell that wall from a wall in real life. That TV, that looks like a real TV. You see that fucking bag of Oreos in that video game? That looks like a real bag of Oreos. Dude, no it doesn't. It does not. Quit giving me this bullshit and Unreal Engine 5 is another example of an engine that looks spectacular, I gotta be honest. Unreal Engine 5 looks great, but right now it's really just a tech demo. That Matrix game that they showed, that wasn't a real full playable game where you get to run around and do actual gameplay. There were set cinematics, and then you got to move the cursor left and right and shoot tires out from cars. It wasn't a full-on first-person shooter where you get to live and breathe in the universe. It's a tech demo where the gameplay is very minimal. It's like watching a pretty cutscene and then doing a quick time event. These aren't games yet. They're selling it to us as if this is going to revolutionize video games. And I'm looking at it right now. Look up the Unreal Engine 5. It looks fantastic. But how viable is it really going to be? And how much are the graphics going to evolve? Because Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, these games are the pinnacle of graphics. We're getting to the point where we can't push it much further. You can't get better lighting, you can't get better textures, you can't get better frames, you can't get better than this. We're getting to a point where, hey, it's another iPhone, iPhone 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, blah, 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 on and on and on. But like at a certain point, the iPhones have been the same for a decade, just new little features, but nothing really revolutionary. The graphics aren't going to be where if you look at a video game, you're not going to be able to tell if, oh my god, is it a game or is it real life? I can't fucking tell. Even Death Stranding, even Ghost of Tsushima, even Horizon Forbidden West, the game I'm playing right now that I think is the best game I've ever fucking seen, where I just sit there and I jump in the water puddles to see the water rippling effects. I just sit there and look at the rocks. I look at the snow. I look at the lighting on her hair. I look at every single particle effect and I'm just in awe of how good it looks. How much better than that are we going to get? Let's be honest. You look at these tech demos and that's really what they are. They're tech demos. They're not actually playable things. They're cutscenes with quick time events. And when they're released actually to the public, they're, they never look as good as they do in the trailers. When the Matrix game, when a game looks that good and it's fully playable, full gameplay elements and it's a full 60 plus hour game, I'll fucking eat my words and I'll believe it. But until then, I just, maybe it's just me, I just don't buy the hype of these engines. I know they're better and they're better and they're better. And the lighting and the textures and lighting and textures and lighting and textures and lighting and textures over and over and over. They're just, it's not that impressive to me. It's not that impressive. It's not that much better. And the Matrix game that just came out, like... You can tell that it's a fucking video game. The cutscenes in these games look like movies that were made in like 2005 or 6. The, they're the equivalent of that kind of CGI. It's not like you're actually looking at something and your brain is confused of if it's real or not. That's never going to happen. Quote me right now. At least in my lifetime. I'm 26 years old. In the next, let's be honest, 40 years, I'm going to be dead by the time I'm in my 60s. I'm not going to see a playable, real, tangible video game where I don't know if it's a fucking simulation or not. They're selling us on some bullshit. It's nice. It's cool. But Unreal Engine 5, come to me when you really have something playable, not just a Matrix tech demo. 
we'll see. All my fellow gamers out there, let me know, am I spouting some bullshit right now? Be honest with me, I can take it. Am I genuinely being ignorant right now? Is there something that I'm not seeing? Because I hear the same thing every two, three, four years about Uncanny Valley. And these demos that we're seeing, we don't actually see it when the game's released. It's like, oh my god, this is mind-blowing, then we see it. And even Horizon Forbidden West, it's like, oh my god, this is the closest thing I've seen to next generation. This is insane graphics. You see the cutscenes and you can tell it's a video game. You can tell it's a video game. You'll always be able to tell it's a video game. But if you disagree with me, let me know. You might know more about coding than me. You might know more about this technology. You might know some things that I don't know. I might be fucking ignorant. I don't know. Enlighten me, please. And now, to end this episode of Pickle Juice, Pickle Juice Episode 2, I know I'm late on this, guys. I fucking know I'm late. And it's because when somebody hypes something up to me over and over and over for months or years, dude, you gotta watch this. Okay, dude, no, no, no. Let me show you a clip from this. You gotta watch it. All right, dude, let me show you a clip. Let me show you a clip. Let me show you the scene. Dude, I gotta show you the scene. My brother hyped up Succession for the past six five or six months to me. I gotta show you this scene, bro. You gotta fucking look at this scene of Logan Roy ripping on his fucking kids. You gotta see this acting. You gotta see this scene, bro. You gotta watch this show. I get to the point where I don't wanna watch it anymore. You've burned me out. I like to watch things on my own accord at my own pace. Don't tell me to watch something and I'll watch it. I have a complex of some, some sort where if somebody tells me to watch something, I want to watch it less. Especially my brother, that's just the relationship that we have. Our whole life, he's told me to watch things, I don't believe him, and then eventually he's always right. I watch it and it blows me away. And god fucking damn it, he was right. Once again, Succession is phenomenal. I'm one season into Succession, and I absolutely love it. I love it. I'm not even going to act like I don't. The first couple episodes, I was like, okay, this is really good. But where is this going? I'm not sure if I'm going to care about these characters. Oh, I care. And even if I don't care, they're entertaining. This, this is my fa- Okay, look. I don't watch a ton of television. I don't. I watch comfort shows like cooking shows, friends competition shows i love competition shows it could be a show about people shining shoes or making ice cream making cupcakes food making plastic boxes making fucking window chimes it doesn't matter if it's a competition show i'm in competition food friends sitcoms comfort shows i like to be comfortable to kind of relax my anxiety and kind of escape from the world. I watch TV as an escape. I don't really get into TV dramas a lot. I haven't seen The Sopranos. I haven't seen The Wire. I haven't seen Mr. Robot, whatever it is. I haven't seen a lot of these shows that people said, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. I just don't watch TV. I, I'm, I'm not as into the long form storytelling as, as movies. And sometimes it's my attention span. Sometimes I can't do it. Sometimes I can. Sometimes I'm in the mood. Sometimes I'm not. I'm a fucking human. Sometimes I'm not in the fucking mood to watch TV. A lot of the times, so I miss a lot of TV shows. But Succession was on, and I thought, you know what? I'll watch it. I'll look up from my computer screen. I'll watch the first episode of Succession. I'll give it a chance. I was hooked, man. Kendall. Logan. Tom. Shiv. Rom, Greg, all these characters, man. If you know Succession, you know what I'm talking about. This show is fucking great. I, these, it's, it's, it's so interesting that we can see these characters who are just so disconnected from reality. They, they have no idea what it's like to be a normal functioning human or to be in poverty or to struggle in life. They're so disconnected from regular people and they're so unaware and they're so selfish and douchey and all they think about is fucking the next move they can make. Every person is just a pawn in their game on their chessboard. You're not a real person. Nobody ever says, hey, I love you just because they actually love you. They're doing it to manipulate that person. It's fantastic. 
but I love these people. I love watching them. They're compelling to watch, and the performances are spec fucking tacular. Guys, Logan's great, Kendall's great, Rom's great, Shiv's great, but Tom? Fucking Mr. Darcy? Mr. fucking Darcy? He is my favorite. Tom is, mm, he's so funny, so entertaining. I love the way he fucks with Greg. I love the way he simps for Logan and the family and for Shiv. I love every mannerism he has. The way he talks and the way that he says things to people and the way that he moves his eyeballs around and I, I just every little mannerism, every little thing he does. I want to just, I want Tom in my pocket. I love Tom. Tom is my favorite. Kendall is probably my second favorite. I don't know. It's kind of Tom and then everybody else. Kendall, Romulus, Logan, they're kind of all fighting for second place for me. But I mean, the fucking Connor? Are you kidding me? Cameron from Ferris Bueller is this fucking rich prick that is endlessly entertaining. Dude, this family, it's so interesting to watch their business moves and them. They just spout out business jargon about stocks and prices and dropping and falling and leverage buyouts and I have no idea what they're talking about but I love it I love the jargon I love the conversations I love the directing I love the quick pace writing the writing is so fucking tight in this show secession season one is is fabulous it's one of my favorite seasons of television probably ever and I hear that season two is even better so if it's even better than season one and how season one just ended with that fucking crazy thing that just happened? Dude, season two, I am ready. You could literally have these characters sitting down, reading the back of a cereal box, and they would find a way to make it compelling. They would find a way to manipulate each other, to use each other, to fight, to argue, to move each other around. Oh, they're so sneaky, they're so snake-like. People say one thing, and then they have other agendas behind each other's backs. And while it's it's vastly entertaining, it's vastly interesting, and it's vastly accurate to the real cutthroat business world, these fucking vipers exist. These rich fucking pricks in New York City in these $3,000 Armani suits and their butlers driving them to their huge 70-story buildings, and this shit exists, man. And it's endlessly entertaining to watch. I love Succession, man. I love it. I'm excited to watch more of it. And I don't know what else there is to say about it. That's it. I mean, what am I supposed to say? I don't know. I could go in depth about every character. I'm not going to. I didn't prepare notes. I didn't even really prepare to talk about this. I just finished the season yesterday and thought, fuck it. Fuck it. I can't stop thinking about it. I'm going to talk about it. Dude, spoilers for Succession. If you've never seen Succession, get out now because go watch Succession. I was actually surprised at how much Logan wasn't in the show from the trailers, from the clips I've seen, from knowing what the show is about, them succeeding their father's business. I expected Logan Roy to be in the show a little more. He's kind of the tertiary main character, maybe even the fourth main character, and it's not really about him. He's kind of the catalyst that gets all of the other characters moving but there's a reason that he's not in two of the episodes a lot he gets sick he comes back he's kind of recovering apparently he's coming back even harder in season two and the relationship with him and kendall now is gonna be fucking fiery and intense because kendall just fucking killed a man manslaughter because he was going to find coke and now his dad knows that he did it. Guys, listen, this show, the main character owns this huge business like Fox News. He's a billionaire and his kids, they're, they're shakers and movers and they're wondering who's going to get the business. His favorite son, Kendall, he's going to get the business, but then he doesn't. Then he fucks up. Then he tries to overthrow his dad. Then he gets the votes to do it. Then they fucking turn on him. Then he gets fired. Then he goes to the fucking rival of his dad to try to buy out his dad and bury his dad. But then on the day that they're going to do it and fuck his dad in the ass, he kills a man while driving, buries him in a lake in a fucking watery grave. His dad finds out that he does it, and now he's his little bitch, his little puppet. 
he's a fraction of the man he used to be and now his dad has him under his thumb he has to do everything he wants he's gonna manipulate him he has to work for him he has to lie for him he has to twist things for him in public all because he knows the secret on him and i'm excited to see where that's gonna go and where the relationship goes and what the fuck's gonna happen I, every time these characters open their mouth i'm just fucking thrilled at what comes out i'm excited to see where it goes i'm excited to see what happens in the show Guys, I I couldn't recommend Succession more. It looks kind of boring from the posters and the trailer, and it's like, oh, just another business show. No, 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 no. This show's great. Maybe it's not up your alley, but give it a chance if you have HBO Max. Try out Succession. I fucking loved it. I loved it. I fucking loved it. And it seems that that would conclude today's episode of Pickle Juice. I think I got everything that I wanted to get off of my chest. There's... There's not really a lot going on in the news right now that's newsworthy. I'm, I'm tired of talking about Zack Snyder. I'm tired of talking about Will Smith slapping people. I'm tired of talking about Marvel vs. DC. I don't really care about a lot of the news that comes out. So I really have nothing more for you. If you enjoyed the episode, give it a like. If you didn't, drop a dislike. If you enjoy my content, check out the rest of it. Check out my page. Hit the subscribe button if you do want to subscribe if you enjoy my content. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss my videos. If you do want to subscribe and you do want to miss my videos for some reason, then don't hit the notey. You know what I'm saying? Don't hit that notification bell. It's your life. You can do whatever you want. Don't, listen, I'm not going to give you the fucking garbledy gook of smash the subscribe button, fucking smash the like button. Dude, you can do whatever you want with your life. If you enjoy my content and you feel gravitated towards subscribing, I appreciate it. If you don't, I appreciate you just giving me the time of day. Just listening to me babble on, that's, that's one of the main reasons I didn't start a podcast sooner because I didn't, I, I wasn't sure if, just like many people aren't, if people would be interested in me just rambling on about stuff. So if you listen to me, I fucking really appreciate it. I appreciate every second that you give me. Time is finite. You have a finite amount of time on this planet, and then it's over. Zip, zap, done. And you gave me some of your time, and I'm not even joking. That means something to me. Like, I, I, I okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop before I well up a little bit. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm Philosophical Pickle, not my legal name, just so you know. This was Pickle Juice Episode Two, and until we meet again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.